All right, guys, so we're in the forums this morning, and they're all talking, and some people were, you know, flapping their mouth like I was, and they asked this and that, and sent a bunch of stuff over here and comments to me, and I kind of figured it's going to be something with their favorite person from Louisiana. <laughs> Anyways, listen... So I went on there and I watched a video. And you did a Minarelli jug. Okay, and it came out wrong. But, I mean, he point blank said he watched YouTube videos. Had no idea how to do it. He tried it. And he tried to save the thing because it was screwed up. So, you know, hey, trial and error, I guess. But, it, I don't know, people are really... Um, the motorized bicycle community... Has a bunch of 35, 40 year olds that act like 12 year old little schoolgirls that like to gossip and cause chaos. So, I don't know. Grow up, guys. But with that said, there was a lot of people that were actually interested in how to hone a cylinder correctly. So, I'm going to explain it. Okay. This right here is a stone type one. There's somewhat three, there's somewhat four, there's somewhat five jaws. They're all usually, the ones that have more jaws, they're actually usually a fighter, finer grip. And that's for doing something like stainless steel and stuff, which nobody is going to do that in the motorized bicycle. Okay, And I'm going to mention something else too. When you do stainless steel, they use grinding compound in with the stuff. Because usually it's such a fine stone that you're going to do it with. So it helps get out some of the bigger stuff. But with that said, we're not going to worry about that. So for a two-stroke, you never want to use one of these that has all the little balls on it. Those are strictly for a smooth bore four-stroke cylinder. Okay? And the reason is, is the balls, as they go around, will hit all the ports and change the size of them and nick the walls up. These, on the other hand, as it passes a port, they'll stay flat with the cylinder and you won't get snagged. So, now, the other thing too about a four-stroke is you always see people going up and down pretty fast, probably about... 1200 rpm roughly something like that you go down and up down and up and usually you're done i mean that should be about all you need to do deglazing and stuff like that on average uh this one right here is a 220 that's about average 400 is something in imperfection <laughs> really 220 is the best for like doing two strokes and that's why I have this now this one here when you do a two stroke this one here can go all the way down to three quarter inch and out to two and a quarter inch so it's very important to get the correct sizes so that's what that is this is a tensioner the more you tighten this the harder these flip out Really, when you're doing a cylinder, you want it as loose as possible. Loosey-goosey. So, alright. So, for a two-stroke, now, this is the type that you would want to use. And you got to get the correct size. You get one too big, it's going to force it. You're, you're going to have some issues. So, you want to get the correct size. Now, this one here, I actually use this on the RC two-stroke engines and stuff like that for years. So here's the next thing. I have people say, oh, you can't use it on a chrome line cylinder. And that's false. Um, the reason that people don't use these a lot on chrome line cylinders, and you hear that, they use them to deglaze them and stuff like that all the time. It's been done for years. Is usually that cylinder is so worn by then. That when they do use this, it actually chews through the rest of the finish. So, if you had something where you screwed up something and you're trying to just buff out a little bit or something like that, there you go. Or you 
followed it out really bad and you just blazed over everything inside. Take this, get your uh, oil hatch in back and you're good to go. So, that's another thing too. Now this, when you go down, makes a swirl pattern like a spring. And when you go up, it cross hatches. So you go up and down. You never sit in one spot. And what it is, is when these make all the little patterns, it holds oil between the ring and the cylinder wall. So that's the main point of that. Um, the other thing, too, is when you're doing one of these, now, a lot of people will put oil in stuff, and it's actually not very good to put oil on these. Or, you know, like you would for honing, uh, like a knife and stuff. What you really want to do is take 50% gasoline and 50% kerosene and mix them in a little cup. And then put it all over inside and run this up and down. Make sure your stones are wet in it. You want to soak them in it. Like dip one in for a minute and, and inside of your jug and then do it. Now the kerosene... It's like the best thing. Now, if you can't get kerosene, um, the next best thing that a lot of people will use that do engines and stuff, you go and find the Tiki Torch oil. And that is the bomb for just ready to go. Dip it in, put it in your thing, and go. And then when you're done, you make sure you rinse out your cylinder with gas to get any of the grit or the metal off. But you always want to thoroughly rinse that engine out with that. Now, I, I guess in that video I used grinding compound, which I've only seen people do stainless steel marine cylinders. And diesel cylinders, too. Two-stroke two diesel cylinders. Because they do use that liner. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's always usually in a stainless steel type deal. Um, anything that's steel, you want to do it with, like, kerosene gas or that mix. If it's cast iron, now cast iron's a whole other beast. <laughs> um, when you're doing cast iron, I would just use straight up kerosene and put it in there. Or, I mean, you could do the gas in that. But the reason that I say that is... <sighs> cast iron is very porous and the kerosene tends to stick to the pores a little better as you do it versus if it's watered down some so that's usually the typical scenario people do with the cast iron ones so anyways I, I just I hope that helps clear up some stuff but yeah if you really want to use one of these you go down up down up you know, check your cylinder. You can do it on a chrome line cylinder. I've been doing it for years. I don't know where that myth comes from. A lot of dirt bike people, go-kart people, shifter carts, all that stuff that have the two strokes. People use these all the time to deglaze them and stuff. Um, you know, if you got a uh, cylinder where you, you trenched it, <laughs> who knows, you know, and you get it smoothed out a little bit and it looks like it's savable, yeah, run one of these up and down in it. I mean, what's what's the loss? You're either going to replace that jug, or it's going to save it with one of these. So, I don't get the logic behind people, why they say that. But, you know, majority of chrome line jugs are going to have enough meat inside that you can make like two or three passes and rehatch it. So, anyways... So yeah, ball mill, great for a four stroke if you have the right one. This one is the bomb for a two stroke for the fact it doesn't snag on the ports. So, alright, peace out.